the world we knew or the stability we knew is not the same, but we can turn this crisis into an opportunity. So hello everyone. Uh, we are having today with us Georgia Brooks. Hello Georgia. So good to have you here today. Um, and so good to see also everyone else in this session whom we are familiar with and also people who are for the first time at Unleashed today webinars and online events. For everyone who is not familiar yet with Unleash Today, uh, we are organizing financial series on um, how to invest, how to do your business, how to run your business, and how to budget better. For more information, please follow us on our social media. Uh, and why not also have a look at the upcoming book of Unleash Today, which is going to uh, launch in uh, March 2021. So keep a close eye on the new book appearing soon. Georgia, could you perhaps tell us what people must know you for? Okay, well, um, you probably all know me for FemPower, which I launched four years ago, which is a nonprofit organization that focuses on women's rights projects in the Middle East. But I will actually be talking more today about my new business that I set up or will set up in Brussels, which I've been working on for the last two years. Uh, so that does include both COVID and Brexit, which I will talk about later. And that is a private women's club in Brussels. So it's the first of its kind, a members club in the London style with bar, restaurant, offices, um, meeting spaces, etc. So I've really had to learn how to not only be a CEO of, say, a company, but also how to be a restaurant manager, how, to, how does a bar work, how do you run co-working spaces, etc. And now, especially in the prism of COVID, how do you make everything safe and hygienic? So that's what I've been doing. That's who I am. And I'm here today really to talk about how you can make a career change. That is something that's very close to people's heart at the moment. And then easy steps for starting a new business, because I've, trust me, I've just done it. This is all fresh in my mind, and I'm really happy to share this with you all. We know that uh, yes, so many people have been shocked by coronavirus, but actually that shaped many of us to redirect our attention on a different career path. Some of us decided to change our job. Some of us decided to uh, open perhaps a business to set a new project to uh, enhance our knowledge on uh, any of uh, different areas which were unknown to us beforehand. And I think we can just start our discussion on how is it to change the career path also in the midst of coronavirus. Actually, this is a great time to think about changing career paths because I think we've all, well, we've all been, we've all seen and we've all experienced that the world we knew or the stability we knew is not the same. And so there's a lot of freedom there. And um, a survey that came out last year actually showed that one in three women in the US were actually inspired by the pandemic to set up their own business. And even more, 40% were looking at becoming their own bosses. So I think a lot of people, a lot of women have said, okay, this is a crisis situation, but we can turn this crisis into an opportunity. And what would be the first step that a young woman or a woman who is already far in her career would do right now to, to change that career path? I think the first thing that I would recommend is really talking to as many people as you can, be that friends, be that business leaders that you admire, or looking and or looking for a mentor in a similar industry that you're looking to go into to see, okay, do I have a good idea? Is this marketable? How can I position myself? I see. Um, I'm aware that many of us actually uh, started to create our personal brand on social media, uh, mm -hmm. for instance, publishing regularly on LinkedIn or any other channel which we find uh, more or less suitable for our personality and character. Um, do you see this as a way actually to find potentially um, yeah, a better job or to switch uh, the career path? Yes, actually, social media is extremely important because that's your personal brand. So you're essentially selling an image of either yourself or your product or your business that you want to get across. And I've seen women on LinkedIn use LinkedIn extremely well as a means, they're just putting out videos, talking about 
subjects that are close to their heart and have in turn actually got a job in the field they want to move into on the back of those videos. So true. Um, we are having actually a question already from Lisa Lotte in the chat, and thank you so much for um, phrasing it there. So she's asking Georgia, how did you adapt your business startup plan with COVID? And actually, we are going to get started uh, to discuss more in depth on how to start and grow your business. Georgia, how did it happen? Actually, I'm aware that you had a project which was launched four years ago, and that's Temp power, and it was obviously uh, arranged beyond Corona. Perhaps it changed somehow the way you organized that, or the strategy you adapted in the time of Corona. How did it happen? Yes, it's a very good point. One of the projects that we were supporting and had drawn up together changed irrevocably during the pandemic. So we were initially focusing on women's health um, pre and post natal care. But as March hit and the numbers in Egypt are, are quite high, the organization got back in touch with us and we refunded and remodeled the project to then, to then make it much more about COVID. So that was a direct result of the pandemic. I see. And I'm also aware that you launched actually another project of yours right in the midst of Corona. Actually, it's still, you're still working on it. Can you I also am. describe how it's going right now? Well, I mean, that's the downside of COVID is that, of course, I, I took a six to 12 month hit with my business there. And most of my technology, a lot of my supplies were coming from, from China and that was all put on hold. And it's only now that we're really starting to receive shipments in. So how did I adapt my business plan? Honestly, I just put it on hold and, and I used it as an opportunity to, to renegotiate. I used it as an opportunity to source other materials or look into other businesses that I wouldn't have done otherwise. So it did pay off in some ways. Very curious, uh, but I am interested to know what is your position on, for instance, writing a business plan. So do you usually start with that step when you set any new project or do you dive straight away into the work and how it goes, it goes. So what is your story on that? Neither actually the first step that I did and that I would recommend is to really work on your company's values. So what do I or who do I want to be? What does the company want to stand for? And I actually wrote out the example of Starbucks to everyone, which is, I think, useful to hear. So one of their values is creating a culture of warmth and belonging where everyone is welcome. Now, you may have your own opinions of Starbucks or other large uh, American-based companies. But I think it's really important to just put in writing almost a mission statement about who you are and what you want to achieve. And once you have that, once you have your, your core values, or as some business plans like to call a value proposition, then you kind of you imagine that's kind of the core and then you build around it. And once you have your core values set, what it would be the next step you would have to take uh, to pursue? Okay. So there's an excellent, um, the business model canvas. Yep, there we are. And this is an excellent tool. It's the one page business plan. And I wish I had known about this three years ago when I was writing the business plan for the club because it really streamlines everything into one page. So I learned this at business school uh, last year and I actually went back and then did my own business plan on this. And as I said, value propositions is at the heart and then you work around it. So who are your customers or clients? What are their problems and what are you going to solve for them? So you're essentially trying to determine what is your USP and how you're going to make that work. So what resources do you need? What team will you have around you? Who are your competitors? Where are the largest costs? And it's, it's extremely clear and you can, almost, you can almost fit this to any business. I see. And usually when you start setting this uh, business plan, is it normal to readapt it? Would you recommend to anyone to readapt as it goes? The, um... I mean, you have to. We don't live in a static world, so you're always going to have to go back and tweak it. And that's okay. I mean, sometimes, um, well, we spoke about this uh, earlier. You know, I'm not a massive fan of change. And I think COVID was a great lesson to, okay, sometimes you do have to change and adapt and you shouldn't be afraid of that is my, is my biggest lesson. I see. Actually, um, I'm curious. So I, I was sometimes, I have sometimes a struggle 
when I start a new plan or a new project, it's very hard for me to stay focused on one particular idea. How do you see this issue? So when you start, for instance, when you started a fan power initiative, did you have any struggles through the time when the time was passing by to stick with the initial idea and keep going? Was it the same, for instance, with the uh, mine initiative that you started it in 2019 and then Corona hits? What did you do? Can you like, how do you keep on going with the same idea? Well, I think ultimately any business and initiative that you set out has to come from the heart. I know that sounds a bit sloppy, but if you don't have that passion or you don't have that um grounding it's going to be very hard to keep the big picture in mind because there are so many small points there are so many details and unnecessary but necessary admin bureaucracy that you're going to come up against and if you're not committed 100 percent to your idea then it will become a chore and then it will become a really a weight around your neck so with fempower just to answer your question that was i would say a little bit easier because Human rights, women's rights in particular, are extremely important to me. That's what I have devoted my life to now. And so it was never a question of, oh, well, if it doesn't work, um, you know, tant pis, as you would say in French. No, it was like, no, this has to work. And so if, you know, plan A isn't successful, well, then we'll think about plan B. And we did have examples where, for example, funding was held up um, because of um, government um, regulation there's a lot of um, investigations into money laundering practices not that obviously we're doing that but it takes a long time so whereas i had planned to um to work on projects on an annual review basis actually we had to change that to six months and we took that decision quite quickly because otherwise it would have it would have ground to a halt and then of course with covid and the club yes i mean i really had to go back and say okay well I can't do X, Y, and Z for the foreseeable, say, three months, but I can focus more on A, B, and C. And it was all a matter of just kind of shifting. You're never, you're never kind of putting things aside or forgetting about them. You're just kind of shifting priorities as the, the timing demands. I see. What did you advise actually to any founder who is right now thinking to shut down the entire business? Mm. Because of COVID or in, in general? For instance, yeah. Well, I think that's an extremely brave decision. Um, that's, that's a hard question. I, what would I say? I think, look, you're the only person who knows your business and, and you as a, as a CEO or as a director or leader, and only you know what's best. So I would say there's absolutely no shame, especially not in the current circumstances, I think it's more power to people really to, um, to, keep, to keep going. And there's also a lot of power to say, you know what, this didn't succeed and that's okay. That doesn't mean that I'm a failure as a person. I see. Mm. Do you have actually any way in which you celebrate the successes in your business? Ah, celebrating successes in my business. Um, yes, yes. I mean, I have some, I mean, you know, a glass, a glass of champagne here and there is, is never unwanted. And um, I share it with my friends and my family because they're the ones who have been around me, um, especially in the last two years, listening to all my complaints and, and worries and fears and concerns. So I really, I really like to celebrate with them. And I think that's really important as any entrepreneur or founder is to create a support tribe around you more than a network it's really having people who are there for you as a as a person and because you mentioned uh, just before about perhaps some failures or some difficulties which you had throughout your uh, path in your business could you perhaps describe uh, some some of your biggest regrets that you had throughout the time in the business obviously so my biggest regrets um, in, in the last couple of years, yeah, I think one of my biggest regrets is that um, well, my biggest regret is that COVID happened. There's not really much I can do about that. And I think there was a certain point actually towards the end of last year where I lost a little bit of faith, not in 
not in the idea, but maybe in myself. And I think it was, you know, it's tied up with, with COVID, obviously, malaise. And I was a little bit like, oh, it's becoming hard work. And so I, re I regret that I fed that as much as I did. But I'm, I'm very happy that I managed to pull myself out of that mindset. We have uh, another question from uh, our audience, from Lisa Lotte, uh, who is asking you, did you always see yourself as an entrepreneur? Absolutely not. No. And Janine will tell you this. I was at school. If someone told me to do something, I would do it. I'm an excellent um, executor. In fact, you know, you have these personality types. I'm always like um, the executor or the, the, the manager. And like, yeah, I'm really good at like, following directions. So no, I always thought to be an entrepreneur, you had to be kind of, you know, kind of out of the box and really creative. And, you know, you slept in a hammock, things like this. That, that was my idea. And so to find myself now as a small business owner and the founder of a, of a nonprofit within both of them five years is, is actually hilarious to me because I never imagined this. Did you have actually any female inspirations that made you to change your perspective on business? I was really inspired by the founders of the Albright Club in London. I think they've done an amazing job to go up against the kind of time traditions of the gent gentlemen's club in London and, you know, to really um, create a community. I mean, I was very impressed with how Albright, you know, try to work on, say, a financial, professional, business, social level, which didn't exist before. And I think it's really important that younger women now grow up and see that actually that's completely normal, that, you know, you have the spaces for women and that's okay. I mean, spaces for men, they will always be there. And, um, and then, I mean, generally, I'm, I'm really inspired by the women in my life, um, particularly, I know this is cliche, but I'm really inspired by my mother, because, you know, she moved, migrated twice from Egypt to Canada, Canada to the UK, and me myself now having moved from the UK to Brussels, which you think wouldn't be a big culture change, but it really is. Um, I have a lot of time for women who pursue their dreams and and take those big uh, take those big leaps. Thank you for sharing. I think actually our parents are one of the biggest role models that one would have, one could have, and and sometimes we have all our inspirations around us. And having a look at it and taking the most out of it can mm -hmm. help us so much in our personal growth. Um, actually, we are also speaking today about how to grow your business, how to scale up your business, and particularly during COVID times, 2021. So what is your suggestion? How one who already started uh, his or her project would have to grow now the business? Well, I think it's very important that you start looking down at the financial side. And I know that the series that we're speaking on now will focus more about female investment uh, down the line, I think female funding or certainly funding for female founded companies will be a big topic, certainly with the most recent Bumble IPO. We're talking more and more about female CEOs, about female billionaires, millionaires. But at the same time, we still almost today have less than 30% funding as of last year. So in fact, we're talking about it, but the figures are going down. So I hope at one point they're going to come together. And, and that's where my focus would be, because sadly, you do need the resources if you want to certainly grow and scale. And that comes from having a pitch, so making sure you have your ele elevator pitch down. So, you know, in 30 seconds, who are you? What are you selling? What are your USP? It's, I really like the, the concept of what problem are you solving? That's a really, I think, a very healthy way to look at it, as opposed to, I have a product. No, it's actually you are missing this or you need this and this is what I am providing. And then I would highly recommend, especially for the women in the audience, to look at the many multiple online courses that are available. I did an excellent uh, business course via edX last year and most recently with the Yale Get Smarter program on a women's leadership program. So starting always with investments in yourself, basically. Actually, because... <laughs> nicely done, yeah. 
because you mentioned about describing the problem that you are solving for your project. Georgia, can you tell us what problem are you solving with your uh, projects? So with Fempower, I'm solving the uh, um, highly important problem of Ill, Ill education and a lack of access to healthcare, which is basic human rights and basic needs. And sadly, many girls and young women just don't have that. So, so that's that's one one aspect. And with the club, I'm solving the problem of what I find a problem of lack of community and a lack of a base for women in Brussels. So, Georgia, if you don't mind, perhaps we can now discuss about women's leadership. Perhaps not a topic which is that much discussed, but luckily that we have here you today which is a definitely good role model of uh, being a leader and we can discuss here two uh, directions of leadership uh, both on the work floor and in business so what is leadership for you georgia how do you describe leadership in first place so i think leadership for me is really is being someone who inspires and motivates the people around you and I think actually there has been a lot of discussion, especially in the last 12 months in vis-a-vis -vis political leadership. So with the pandemic, you know, the amount of press coverage and studies done on Jacinda Ahern, on Angela Merkel, on basically all of the Nordics who are just kind of outstripping all of us. And I think we've seen that, as Jacinda Ahern says, you know, you can be a compassionate leader and be a strong leader. Like one does not exclude the other. So for me, it's all about encompassing who you are and harnessing that not only for yourself, but for others. And how do you see yourself as a leader right now? Um, uh, tired. I see myself as a, I hope, um, a visionary or in, in the sense that I have an idea and I'm working towards it and I aim to inspire people around me to join me on that quest. I see. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, what can you tell us more about leadership? So what are the, the main, um, yeah, the pillars of a leadership? So that's, it's, well, it's different for everyone. So my first point on this topic was really about your own personal values. And my values may be different from your values, maybe different from Kate's values, et cetera, et cetera. So it's really about determining and, and defining then Maybe what are your top three or five? So am I resilient? Am I courageous? Am I um, compassionate? And there are multiple tools that can help you do this. One of them uh, that I would highly recommend is called Clifton Strengths. And this is an online platform that um, paid for, but that you have to answer a number of questions and they provided a report on your, your key strengths and say areas to work on. Once you have those, it's also quite useful if you're, if you're in the mood and not too embarrassed, maybe to ask friends or family around you and say, when have you seen me performing at my best? Like, give me an example. Because it's always very interesting, like your idea might be different from someone else's idea. And then my second point uh, that I wanted to raise was emotional intelligence, which is probably the most important aspect of working with or leading others because it's all about connecting with people in a in an empathetic in a genuine way one of my core values that i like to i like to think of myself is that i'm authentic so i i value honesty and integrity um people know that they can trust me to be to be honest and i'm not going to to play games so emotional intelligence how do you how do you put that in practice? So say it's really small things that you might not even think of, but say maintaining eye contact or practicing active listening, moderating your behavior. So say someone's speaking and your impulse is to interrupt and say, oh yes, I know what you mean. Just kind of like taking a step back, letting them finish and then like pausing. These kind of very small steps that we all think we, we're doing, we all think we know, but in practice, not always the case. And do you find it rather harder to, to be a good leader um, during uh, the pandemic when we are keeping the social distancing, we are using so much technology and perhaps 
also having a simple eye contact is, is rather hard because yeah, you have to look weirdly in the camera, for instance, uh, and not looking in the, in the eyes of the person. Yes, I, but I think, you know, everything's hard with the pandemic. I, I'm, I'm struggling to think unless you bought shares in Zoom, how it could have benefited you. Um, and it's true that the technology does create a barrier so on the one hand, you have a greater audience because you know anyone can join from anywhere. But on the other hand, you still have the screen. You're not talking to people face to face. So we, I would say we have to be even more mindful and even more conscious of how we are behaving and acting because there's nothing worse than, say, if I was to talk to you right now, but I'm on my phone, like, oh, yeah, yeah, let me just check, you know. No, I mean, you would never do that. You would never do that in real life. And so we shouldn't think that we can do that just because we're behind the screen. That's so true. Actually, we, we've got a question uh, from our audience, um, which is curious to know how exactly COVID reshaped the working habits, uh, switching to uh, working online, for instance, and how did you face this challenge? Oh, my goodness. Well, this is a very, uh, this is a moot point, because I'm at home right now, um, on my screen talking to you all. And I've had to ask everyone in my family to turn off their Wi-Fi, turn off all their screens, because we just don't have enough bandwidth to, to be on it. So it is a juggling game. And I think everyone would say the same thing. It's We're all juggling with, I like this analogy of, with glass and plastic balls at all times. So this could be, you know, work, it could be motherhood, it could be family life, it could be hobbies, it could be the side business. And we're just juggling all these balls all the time. And sometimes you just have to let the plastic balls drop. You know, you have to really say prioritize. And that's okay. We can't be carrying everything at the same time. So yeah, me personally, it's just meant that, um, you know, we have to be much more considerate and patient with each other. And and where possible, I mean, I go to the club <laughs> quite a lot just to get out because otherwise I think I'd be exhausted. Actually, you mentioned such an important word, priority. And I, I don't stop thinking about leadership always in combination with taking a pause, relaxing, um, being with yourself. And I have a question for you. Uh, in all this like hustle culture, when everyone is trying to prove that he or she is working always like 24 out of seven we are responding to emails sending i don't know papers or writing something and i'm curious to know how much actually do you work how many hours do you work yeah, oh today? gosh well it, i'm when am i not working and that's the that's the the downside of being especially a startup is that you can't really say no and you have i mean there's a lot of things that just need my attention at all times I will say, though, that I am trying to be much stronger at setting boundaries. So maybe I don't reply to my emails after 10.30, which I know is terrible, and I would not recommend it. But it happens. Um, and I do try and get out uh, for at least a daily walk with my dog, who would probably actually just smother me if I didn't. So sometimes life forces your hand. Sometimes you have to force it. But you're right. I mean, self-care and setting those boundaries and investing in yourself is really important. Georgia, did you ever had any thoughts about giving up your business? No, never. No, no, no. Then what no. makes what makes you every day wake up? What what idea makes you go ahead and, and run the projects you're running? Well, um, because I have to. It's um, I'm quoting all the all the oldies today. So there's a line in my favorite film, The Red Shoes, where Victor Lermontov asks Vicky, Victoria Page, why she wants to dance, why she wants to be a ballerina. And she says, because I must. You know, why do you want to, why do you want to live? And he says, well, because I must. And the same answer, I just, yeah, I, I have to. If, if I didn't, um, I'm driven by purpose and, and I'm a, I'm a doer, it sounds ruder than it is. And that's what motivates me. I'm motivated by, by doing something, by making a difference, no matter how small on a daily basis. And if I didn't have that, I don't know. I, yeah, I don't think I'd be the person I am today. 
Yeah, thank you for sharing this. Um, perhaps uh, we can continue our discussion uh, with uh, a bit of uh, focus on um, social media resources and online resources general on, on a general basis. So, um, and if, if you don't mind, we actually didn't discuss this, but uh, prior to prior to the session, but uh, now we have this boom of um, Clubhouse. How do you see this new platform? Um, personal I'm, on media? Clubhouse. I'm on Clubhouse and um... It took me a long time to, uh, how do I say? It took me a long time to, to work it in the sense that initially I was like, oh, this is great. I'm going to go to all the rooms I can and listen in. And, you know, you're really swayed by, like, oh, Elon Musk is speaking, so I have to be there, even if it's like a 10 hour time difference. And, and then I fell out of love with it because it was just too much. But now I have actually found a number of groups, and that's my big tip, is to find groups that you like, and actually smaller groups, because the smaller the number, the better it is. And you can have and you can meet some amazing people having really interesting conversations. And within, I think, you know, a week, I'd already made a new connection, and we had friends in common, and then we, I put her in touch with another friend, and they're working on a project together. That kind of organic, I guess, community is is very important but I do know it's still very exclusive and so I mean actually I have a couple of invites going if anyone would like one to just let me know and um, because I think it's really important that that more and more people are on it and, and especially especially in Europe because for the moment we're, we're quite outnumbered and I can't be getting up uh, in the middle of the night to listen to a, to a listen to a room yeah, and perhaps seeing that this is a new platform just to prove also our leadership grow as leaders, uh, learn a lot because you can definitely join different um, yeah, rooms which uh, discuss topics which we are unaware of or we are not, the topics were not our strong power beforehand. And why not enhancing our knowledge also in, uh, in particular areas? Definitely. But uh, my, uh, my curiosity right now and also my, my inner thought this day was whether through the appearance of um, Clubhouse, the appearance of uh, all the other social media which now are um, running successfully, don't you see um, just a transition between the written text, from, from written text to the, um, yeah, the, the, the verbal text? So basically the written posts are uh, getting less attention nowadays. I do see an increase in video posting, actually, that's, um, that's for sure. On LinkedIn now, it's much more video content, same on Instagram too, uh, everyone's putting on IGTV. Um, I, I think there's space for, for all types of, of media there. Um, obviously with Clubhouse, you know, the benefit is that you don't have to dress up on a Thursday evening with sparkly earrings. No one can see what you're, what you're wearing and it's much more about, and, and it's not recorded, so you can you feel a little bit more they at ease and people but people like videos people like to see faces I don't think that will ever go away people like to see images and people like to see words you know you I like to read messages it's there's still a lot of power there yeah th thank you for sharing your opinion here actually I encourage everyone to share the questions for Georgia in the chat either just unmute yourself and speak up. Why not? We are really willing to hear your voices as well. And we have one extra question in the chat from Lotte, and she's asking, at what point did your idea uh, transition uh, to actually starting your business and how much internal support did you have in this? So I actually came up with the idea of the Members Club at mid-end 2018. And it wasn't until 2019, actually end 2019, that uh, I took over a, um, a business and um, started the renovation works. So yeah, I mean, it took, a, it took a long time because I did a lot of research, as I mentioned beforehand, you know, market research, I did a lot of preparations, you know, what is my USP going to be, et cetera, et cetera. External support was, yeah, I mean, I depended a lot on my husband simply because um, well, one, he's an amazing man, and an amazing lawyer, but also he is Flemish. So I needed a lot of help with the language side, which, you know, never underestimate, um, but you're not in Belgium. And, and likewise from friends, just using a lot of people as sounding boards, like, mm, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? Yeah, I maybe could have reached out to more people. Uh, I tend to carry a lot of it within me. 
So do, do you see uh, as an essential part in building and scaling up a business, the power of networks? So are they directly mm. interlinked between the two? Yes, and I think what's also interesting, um, especially for the audience today, is to determine what your what kind of networks you have. So there are typically different types. So I am a broker network, which means that I kind of broker between different groups of people. So I know a lot of people in different worlds, and I'm kind of maybe the, the common point that they wouldn't know otherwise. And then you want to move more into an expansive network where actually everyone knows each other. And that's that's quite a that's quite powerful because those connections already exist and you're not say so alone. And then you still have have some individual like individual networks where you're say you're like an influencer or a public figure, and you the individual have a large audience. So you know once you see where you are, once you see where you want to go, so network or convener, if you want to expand or an individual. I know that I need to bring people together. And so that's been a great way for me to think about, okay, so in my business, what I want to do is create a platform, create actually create a, a physical being where people can come together and make those connections. And I, I never like the idea of people saying, you know, use your network and like, use these people. No, I, I think it should be much more connections as opposed to use. Like how can I better connect with this person? How can I better... Um, understand what they need. Perhaps we can discuss slightly on the skills that one has to have when running a business, just to, to turn back to, to our discussion on business. Sure, sure. I mean, well, I think the number one skill is to be organized, you know, like Alimit is just, that is the number one because there is so much happening and you have to have folders and like, physical folders and also mental folders to be able to switch from thinking about um, okay, my tax returns to my invoices, to my events, to my furnishings. To, I mean, there's so much happening at one time. You have to be really kind of this mental agility almost. And then I would say resilience. I know it's the word of the year and everyone's talking about resilience. And what is resilience? And resilience really to me is like being a, like a reed in the riverbank, you know, you can blow in the wind, but you don't break. So it's the idea that you can take what's given and adapt with it if need be, or if nothing happens and you're, you're still there growing happily, being turned into papyrus and 2000 years ago. Yeah, you need to have these qualities to say, okay, this didn't work, that's okay, I'll try again. Or this is working, that's great, I'll, I'll expand. Georgia, what did you prefer? Uh, running, uh, actually starting and running a business alone or with partners? Well, I've never done it with partners, so I don't know. Um, yeah, uh, well, I have always been a bit of a control freak, so I suppose this was the perfect uh, outlet for my perfectionism tendencies, which I am working on, as you all know. Um, so maybe for my next one, I'll try with a partner and let you know. Well, what, what would be then the, the, the scary part uh, with working uh, with partners? Well, I think, you know, once you're... And you're working with, with the equal partners, of course, that you may have a very different opinion in terms of how you want to approach a subject, or you may have very different managerial styles. You may be very, just very different people at, at the core. And so, of course, on the one hand, it's much more difficult, say, to get a uh, consensus. But on the other hand, I mean, in terms of brainstorming, in terms of sharing ideas, it's better. Certainly. Uh, if I may ask you, do you right now um, have any employees who are you're running your business by yourself with just your uh, inner resources? So um, for the club, not yet, uh, because we haven't launched. Um, but for FemPower, employees, no. But say I work with very closely um, the management team at the King Boudoir Foundation, where we are registering as our fund. And so we have a management committee, and so I work with them, yes. Um, I'm curious, to what extent do you think a start an, an starting entrepreneur would need a mentor? I think a mentor is a great idea. And that is something, actually, I should have said this with your regret question. That is something I regret when I was thinking about the club two years ago, because, you know, I thought I have this great idea. The idea is enough to sustain me, and actually it wasn't. And it's only in the last 
maybe in the last nine, six months, I met someone who within only one meeting gave me more reassurance, more ideas and more encouraging than ever before. And I was like, if only I'd met her, you know, a year earlier, where would I have been? Certainly mentally for myself. I think mentors are, I'm a big fan, highly recommend. And do you have right now a mentor? Not officially, but certainly unofficially I do. And how can we find better our mentors? That is a great question. Well, you know where you can come to my club because I'm going to have a mentorship program. So that's where you're going to find them. We're definitely going to I, I, Yeah, it's again, sometimes it comes down to luck, these kind of serendipitous connections, or it comes down to asking around, like, do you know anyone in this, in this sphere, in this space that I could talk to and building a relationship from there? Yeah, thank you so much for sharing all these insights. 